You're welcome back. This is News File, it's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. MTN is proud to bring you News File. MTN everywhere you go. Star Assurance, your solid partner. Bank of Africa, strong as a group and close as a partner. Amen Scientific, God is the healer. Duraplus, where Duraplus goes, water flows. So the NPP appears to... Let's start with uh, Felix. So when I hear the, some leaders in the NPP say, it's okay, let's allow, like, Chairman Sabonsu, some other leaders. Chairman Sabonsu, for example, has said that if you, you dare with him, you will be committing suicide. I remember very well how mm -hmm. the NDC was hit. Sure. Um, this is a path that you guys have, you know, traveled before. What do you say? They say newer members, they are suggesting that newer members should stay. And these older hands, which are experienced hands they need, should also stay. Now, Mr. Samson, <laughs> ultimately, the fundamental mm. premise upon which democracy operates is to allow the people to choose their leaders. That is what it's about. It's not about what the leadership wants or what is beneficial to them. So I do not buy this argument about, oh, uh, Honorable Mensah Mons has 20 years of experience under his belt. Mm. Or the education minister is doing well with some policy. Or that the deputy speaker, because his deputy speaker is unable to go, his, to, go to his country, so in an open contest, they will lose. And therefore, they must be grandfathered into parliament again. That is a recipe for implosion. And this is a party that is prone to very intense disagreements. In the mm. run-up to the <laughs> 2016 election, we all witnessed very serious cracks within the party. They may have papered over them and won the election, but they should not be under any illusion at all that those cracks can re-emerge if they travel on the path that they are traveling. Again, a wise uh, old man, Dr. Obeda Samoa, once said that consensus building is the best form of democracy. I think that if they are minded to carry out some reforms in the name of experience and preserving people who have institutional memory, they should find a much better way of doing this. Those processes should precede the period of parliamentary primary so okay. that it is done in good faith. Mm. If today they go for Congress and say that, say, starting from 2024 or 2028, we, as a party, believe that we need to preserve people who have institutional memory and who have experience that can help our cause, either in parliament or in government or in either, any other sphere of life. So we are not going to hold primaries in areas where we have personalities like that. I'm sure that people will buy into it. But if it is made to appear that those seats are shaky because those who hold them today are not performing and mm. the electorate there is dissatisfied with them, dissatisfied with them, I beg your pardon, and so they want to preserve them, it is going to lead to this kind of case. And the MPP should be far too experienced mm. to fall prey to this kind of thing. They mm. must learn mm. from the experience of others. Right. Yeah. Franka, mm. you are going in, and this will be your second time. So you must be happy to hear, you know, Joe or Sewus suggest, or the other persons who have spoken. Uh, we have heard this is from Zit Fanto and others, suggesting that first timers should be allowed a second time because. You know, you are just now learning the ropes in Parliament, and you should not be contested. So you can, you know, do again and come back and assist. Otherwise, it's not helping. You, well, you are, you well, are happy um, about such a thing, even though John Boydou says the form should be available to everybody and that everybody should be contested. Absolutely. You see, that is where I wanted to take it from. Uh, you hit it right on the head now. You see, the party leadership, that is by way of those who are manning the affairs, I mean, you have the chairman himself mm. and the general secretary and the other executives. Their position is that every opportunity should be given to people who are interested to contest. Mm. The ones we are talking about are suggestions that are coming from certain leadership in parliament. Okay? So we should not use that as the basis to generalize as though that is the position of the party. I think that is not the position of the party. I mean, I mm. sit here... I, I, I'm, I'm seeking re-election. Mm -hmm. I've, I've gone for my form. And for now, I don't have anybody challenging me. So if at the close of nominations, okay, I don't have anybody. I'm sure that nobody challenges you. No, <laughs> 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 I must draw them. They are good politicians. They are very, very, very competent <laughs> and qualified persons. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, they yeah, 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 I'm not the only person qualified. They are very competent persons. Some are in high positions in Accra and all that. 
who would have been interested, but all of them are, are, are allowing me to go you well solo. Well. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it, it, it sometimes also depends on how you manage yourself mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. within the, the constituency. Yeah. So it must be an individual effort to yeah. work and it out. You have to work it out yeah. as an individual. You yeah. see, yeah. this issue of if we come out with a policy, then it will breed rebels. Yeah. That's one thing that you should, you, you'll have what, people coming mm -hmm. up as independent, independent candidates yeah. and all that. It will further create problems. You have to form committees yeah. and disciplinary committees to look and to... And Joyce, who is speaking, has that experience because he has to go in the You know, you see, that truly speaking, yes. for the, the, the first yeah. time MP uh, issue you are talking about, it is true that people are not getting their foot in sometimes because you are a first timer and all that. But you will also have glimpses of hope. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you are a first timer you and you start on a good note, you know, people will actually yes. commend you yeah. and try right. to support okay. you. Mm. But if you're also a first timer yeah. and then you go sit in parliament, you, you never make any contribution, you never do anything. People just see you as sitting there doing nothing. Mm. You should not be protected. There should not be, be no basis whatsoever okay. that should be protected just because you're a first timer. You have to demonstrate and earn it. How about the old you hands, know? experienced the hands who are, who are fighting for government business to work in parliament? When you, you see, lose that, you have a I, problem. I want to, tell you, I want to tell you something. Mm. The Honorable Jose Chairman Saboso, the man is, is an embodiment of our democracy in parliament. An embodiment. No dispute about it. He, the practice and procedure in parliament, he's a master. And I, I admire him. Sometimes he speaks as though he's a lawyer. So he should be protected. So yeah. such a person should be protected, but not through undemocratic processes. In, you know, Samson, building consensus is part of protection. Mm. Those who are interested, you sit with them yeah, I mean, and then like, talk it over and let them says know that. It will be suicidal for the party no. if he's allowed no. to be contested. No. I, 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 may not, I may not wholly mm -hmm. agree with that. I think that what the party should do is that I know of a lawyer who was my mate mm. who is interested in contesting John Daku. Mm. John Daku. He went for, for the forms. He's being denied. So I think very that cleverly. Such a person. And you hear the regional secretary of the party yeah. trying an explanation that no, doesn't No, I, 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 just think <laughs> that, I just think that John Daku is, is a very committed party member. He can be called. Then you sit down with him and then talk to him to understand that, look, we're not saying you're incompetent. This is our leader. We want to give him some respect. Mm. I mean, we, we reach some level of understanding. And the man says that on the basis Chairman of what Sabosu we have done, how many terms? I'm, I'm stepping aside. This how is. many terms? But I've heard him. I've heard him. Ten. Yeah. I've heard him. Six. This is a six. 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 Yes. Six. Yes. Six. Yes. Six. He's going six. for his seventh. Six. Six. But I've heard him state Bar categorically Bar that did seven. 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 Yeah. 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 seven. Seven. Okay, so, so he wants to equal back. I've heard him say it. And he was quoted, unless he comes out disputing that. He will retire in 2024 if he gets the opportunity. Yeah, he, said that. He's, he said so. Mm. You know, so but he has said he retired before. He, no, I've not heard him he say before that. that he was going I to think retire. They have, they have I've heard not heard him say so before. before. This is the first time mm. I've heard him say that 2024, I'm going to retire. Okay. So as our leader, if we have to talk it over with people to ensure that he retires in dignity and all that, is that rather than allow him to okay. go through this competitive Interesting. Mm. That you, would be very you, sad. Dr. Ali, you say, do you say leave the decision to the delegates. That is the best democracy, the way to practice it. But here, the people who are seeking to pick the forms are clearly being denied. And you hear um, Adai, mm -hmm. Adai, Adai Limo, Limo yeah. also going to, he can't find the forms. <laughs> um, can they use also, is, when you hear the Santi Regional Secretary, Sampine, he says, you know, there are these few constituencies, they need to manage the process. <laughs> Can they talk to the delegates and by using denying these people the forms, manage the process? It, does that not also work? Is that not democratic? Uh, Samson, I don't think that's the right way to go. There is a democratic reason why we have primaries. One, it deepens into a party democracy. Two, it builds party cohesion. You are talking about elite defection. Mm -hmm. When you make the processes unfair and elect a candidate, definitely people who are given defect. So probably when you make the process more plain and open, when people lose and they know they genuinely lost, they will, they will be a little bit of, they will throw mm. their weight behind the candidate in most mm. cases. So it builds part, but also diversity. You see, there are some constituencies or some areas that you need to protect certain interest groups or certain identities. So there are a lot of reasons why we have primaries. So my, my first reason is, if you say let's protect them, for how long? It's not like a, a presidential uh, contest where you know, your constitution gives you two, two terms. In Parliament, you don't have limit. Mm. So if you protect him now and he keep going, how long are you going to protect him? 
And once you keep protecting him and he doesn't want to go out, then you are suppressing the interests of other people who will have contested. And it's in a region where it doesn't matter, in, in a constituency where it doesn't matter who you put there. So as far as I, I was even MPP, thinking, I was win. even thinking in the Ashanti region, that's where the MPP should even open it up for contest mm. because it's a kind of done deal. And people believe that once a done deal, whether I do well or not, well, I'll still be get elected. That is where the competitiveness should even. Be, be more. That's where they should even open up. Mm. And where people are struggling, in, in regions where people are struggling to contest, then you give them that support. Mm. I'm not completely saying we should, we should support them in that kind. But what I think is that the people must decide if it's based on performance. If you know you've performed creditable well, why do you fear primaries? The people can decide because you are representing them that you actually did No, but Joey says something. Does, is that also, is there not some truth in that? Can we listen to Joe say also? Uh, first Deputy Speaker of Parliament. Can we listen to what he had to say? But, but before that, you see, you were still talking mm. of protecting big wigs. Even if they leave Parliament, they can still advise, they can still train, they can still impart that skills to new coming MPs. So it mm. doesn't mean that once you're out of Parliament, then you're out of business. Okay. They can so still train people. Let, let's listen to Joe Sewell soon and come back. Okay, okay, continue, continue. Mm. Go, go so, ahead. So oh. the, how about the new ones? First what do you say about that? First timers. They just came in, done only one term. Uh, it's now that they are getting used to the rules. So, so, so you, are, you are looking, I think no, no. you are looking Have at this. Exactly. You are looking at largely their role in parliament. Exactly. They are still learning. Mm -hmm. But that one is different mm -hmm. from what you do at the constituency. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? What you do at the constituency will not give the, get the people to give you the opportunity to learn better and do well. Mm -hmm. So these are two different functions. <laughs> what you, your function, your representative function within the House of Leicester. You are, we agree for the first time you will learn. But that, that, that has to do with what you do at your constituency level. So that will give the people the opportunity to renew your mandate. If you go in and they say you are learning, you are not doing well at the constituency. So because you are learning, they should, how long are you going to take to learn? I see. Um, can we hear Joe Jo Usu? OK. Um, okay. I think there's some technical issue with that. Because among the reasons he gives, uh, Kofi, is that, look, because they are very busy, they have to keep government business mm. in parliament working. Mm -hmm. They are unable to go back to their constituencies mm -hmm. like all the other colleagues would do. Mm. Literally, um, he, he's a minister, right? Mm -hmm. So he has to make sure. And government needs parliament to pass the things he wants, approve the spend expenses he wants. And so you need to give them some protection. Is that not fair? It sounds reasonable, but it is never good enough that you want a different set of rules for yourself yeah. and a different set of rules for others. So on that fundamental principle, they cannot advance that argument. Okay, But there is reason to it. I personally believe this is a national problem that is manifesting at the local level. I have made representations, at least within the money, that we need to tweak our democracy. And when it comes to, for instance, parliament, yeah. there should be more selectivity. Yeah. Let me give you a simple example. Parliament or parliamentarians are there to make law. You need to know philosophy. You need to be able to speak and write English because law is made in English. But there's no requirement that you be able to speak and write English to be in parliament. My point is that we have not engineered a good enough system. Then you have subjected parliamentarians to a local level election, which is vociferous. Meanwhile, the work they have to do, like Joe Weiss is saying, and others like you know uh, uh, the majority leader is talking about, it's real. But if you take someone like Joe Weiss, he had this experience. Now, here's the real politic. If they do what is being suggested, it's equal to what we lawyers call ad hominem lawmaking. Okay, you look at the person and then you make a law. It always ends in catastrophe. Google it. You read it. History has taught us the lessons. And incidentally, the other uh, NDC had this. You know, experience. Mm -hmm. So here's the situation. We have and they a suffered. They, they suffered. suffered. Yeah. Badly, Badly, I yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, look, mm -hmm. honestly, I don't purport or suggest or even pretend to advise MPP, but I can tell you, if you go ahead with this, you will suffer, even in your safe seats. Yeah. There's already too much, mm -hmm. you know, complaining within the ranks. Yeah. Okay. Figure out a way. And by the way, Pemka, I think you're a fantastic politician. They should all come and learn from you. The way you have explained your situation is how this must be done. Exactly. Over the yeah. four years, yeah. if you have a Jones, they also have other people like this, you engineer an internal arrangement which leads to a situation where the conflict doesn't happen at the end exactly. and it doesn't blow up in the public. Mm -hmm. But where you've got into now, 
You take my advice, it means nothing. But if you go forward with this ad hominem policy making, you will decimate your members and you take a hard, you pay a hard price mm -hmm. for it. J just mm -hmm. last minute. Yeah. A and I think this is very important. I'm just mm -hmm. uh, riding on the back of what my senior colleague said. The, you, the primary is happening around Apple. Mm -hmm. The yes. new voter is starting around that same time. Oh, if people, if people become angry with their process, they will, they will even register. You will pay a higher price. And, and the MP, they should be very careful. Mm. Let's go through this one. Okay. Very, very, very interesting there. And um, I got a couple of your messages here, but I suppose that time is run out on us. So I'll just uh, thank you all for tuning in and for watching us on your multi-TV um, and also on your DSTV channel 421. Uh, my guests have been Joseph Dindyok Penka, <clears throat> is MP Timpani, and Deputy Attorney General and Minister for Justice. Um, Godwin Ama, who was here earlier, General Secretary, Ghana National Association of Scale, uh, Small Scale Miners. He was joined on the phone by Michael Kwejopepra, President, Concerned Small Scale Miners. What a revealing discussion that was. Felix Kwachi Ufosu is former Deputy Communications Minister and the NDC's parliamentary candidate for Abura Asebu Kwaman Kese. Kofi Bento is Senior Vice President of Imani Africa. Of course, Dr. Ali Duseidu, Senior Lecturer, Department of Political Science, University of Ghana. Um, I visited a certain university and they were saying they need you there. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you very much. I'm Samson Ladia Yanini. As always, my outfit is by Latida. Have a good afternoon.